We're back! Hi, welcome to Garland Collections. I'm Annabelle and today we're starting a new series. It's actually Memorial Day when I'm filming this, so summer is on my mind. And I wanted to start the summer dessert series with one of my most iconic, one of the most iconic combinations, strawberry rhubarb. Strawberry rhubarb is so iconic in a pie, crumble or cobbler. I love it in all of those forms. However, I've never made a galette before. I have this gluten-free rough puff pastry that has been sitting in my freezer for months. Made it gluten-free. It was a lot of work. A lot of labor went into this. I really wanted to use this and I've been really wanting to do a strawberry rhubarb dessert here on Garland Collection, so it just seemed like the perfect storm to create a strawberry rhubarb galette. First things first, we gotta get started with a grocery haul. I didn't get that much. I just got these two bags at Whole Foods. Obviously had to get strawberries. I got rhubarb, but this rhubarb seems really ripe. Like, it smells really good. This is not for the galette, it's just cause I wanted cherries and they looked so so good. Got this vanilla bean ice cream to go with the galette. I'm not gonna be using this, but if you are looking for a gluten-free puff pastry, I haven't used this one before, so I can't speak to how it tastes yet, but I wanted to get this to show you and also for myself to use in the future because sometimes you don't feel like making homemade puff pastry and that's totally fine and it's nice to have that other option. Thing is, I'm not really following a recipe. I did a little bit of research with like Bon Appetit, New York Times, whatever, but with a galette, or I mean, sorry, with a galette, <laughs> just not sure how to say that word. I think that the filling is basically the same as pie filling, and then I already have the pastry made, or you could obviously use the store-bought pastry. The pastry that I made is the rough puff pastry that Claire has on her channel on YouTube, so I'll link that video in the description. There's one thing I've learned about gluten-free pastry dough, it's that it cracks really easily. And so I think it makes sense to move it over onto the parchment paper early. Now I can work the dough and kind of roll it into what I want without worrying about, oh, it's gonna stick to the table. Um, and as you can see, as it warms up, the butter 
it becomes more flexible, which is helpful, but it's also difficult because you don't want it to get too warm or you'll lose your layers that you worked so hard for if you made the pastry dough yourself. So I think what I'm gonna do is once I get this into the shape I want, which we're almost there now, I'm going for like a circle or oval. Once I kind of get this all good, like now, I'm gonna pop it back in the fridge. One of the keys with homemade pastry dough that you kind of just saw me experience is that you have to be smart try to be and there are some quick decisions involved because the pastry dough really needs to stay chilled and pretty cool it can't get too warm and it was warming up fast so i had to work really fast and then pop it back in the fridge to try to preserve the layers between the butter and the flour because if the butter gets too melty then you lose the layers so it can't get too warm until it goes into the oven i literally forgot to put my new homemade vanilla into the mixture let's do that right now wow i wish you could smell that it's back all right now is the fun part Gluten-free dough is so not bendy, so this part is a little hard. A little bit of some thin spots over here. Just gonna do our best. There's already some leaking. It does just have to get in the oven, and this will probably happen in there anyway. Let's brush on the egg. You take this demerara sugar, and sprinkle it all over the crust and the top. Gonna give it this really pretty sparkly crust. Bye, see you later. All right guys, there's 18 minutes left on the timer and I already see so much leakage happening. Like so much of the juice has spilled out and onto like the pan around it, which is fine. It's not a big deal. I just hope it still tastes good. But yeah, I'm just nervous and I'm like, should I take it out soon? Cause I already see a little bit of bubbling, but I'm gonna let it sit and wait a little longer. Don't be alarmed by the burned sauce that poured out the bur burned juice i guess because the galette itself isn't burned and it looks really good and that little corner i was worried about did kind of crack open but not too bad so
Look, it's literally already almost gone. There's only this much left. Thank you so much for coming and baking this strawberry rhubarb galette with me. I'll have the recipe in the description. It ended up working out so well. I tried it with my parents and they both loved it. I loved it. Um, I docked the pastry well enough so that the bottom was crispy. It wasn't soggy. And there obviously was a ton of juice that like erupted out around the galette and then like totally burned but it didn't actually affect the galette itself because it was unscathed, it wasn't burned, it was, I mean, it was perfect. I, I really couldn't have asked for a better outcome, especially with it being the first galette I've ever made. And it's honestly really easy, especially if you have the dough ready to go. The dough, the rough puff pastry is hard to make, but if you do it in advance, then you can just make the filling and do the assembly and it's really fun and it's easy. It's honestly even easier than making pie. And if you have any other iconic summer desserts that you wanna have me make here on Garland Collections, make sure you comment them down below. Definitely like this video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video today. I'm really excited about this series, and you guys know I love cooking with you and sharing what I make in my kitchen with you. So also comment down below one of your favorite summer desserts, because I wanna know what you, I have so many, like I have so many favorite summer desserts, but comment one of your favorites if it's too hard to pick a favorite. Thanks again for watching this video and hanging out with me. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.